Okay, so you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or some other role-playing game and you need a town map. We all need a town map at some point. So I'm going to show how I make one using Incarnate today. And once you log in, you are presented with all of the maps that you have ever made and you go up here and you hit create new map. From here, for making town maps, I personally like the Fantasy Regional HD. And you can see there's different styles that it can make. It can do quite a bit with it, actually. So let's choose that style. And I like square. So 40 by 40 tiles, that seems pretty good to me. And create map. It takes a few seconds and you are presented with blankness. And it is just, this is water, okay? You have to remember you're looking at the background right now, not the foreground. So the first tool here is the mask tool. And what you want to do is create your land mass, okay? Don't think of it as the mask tool, think of it as the mass tool. So I'm going to grab that shovel, just like that. I'm going to click, make sure that add is selected. I'm going to make my brush as big as possible. Now at this point, you have to ask yourself, what do we want? Do we want uh, an island? Just, just a, an island floating with water all on four sides? Do we want a coastal town where maybe the ocean's on one side and the town's right on the edge? Do we want something more inland like farmland or that kind of thing? You know, that's those are all questions that you can answer for yourself. For today, I'm gonna make an inland map, so I am going to just completely cover this whole area with a land mass. Now we have land, okay? If I wanted to, I could make like a little lake over here, uh, maybe even make the brush smaller and tinier and make like a little stream. You know, a river runs through it, just like that. And we have just a little stream on that side. And I think that works well for the purposes that I'm going after here. Uh, brush tool. This is really important. To me, this looks like a desert right now, and that just kind of bothers me. In my head, you know, when I'm building this, I want it to look like an area where somebody might actually want to settle. So I'm going to choose grass two. Again, I'm going to go to the highest brush I have. And because I did it foreground background, see that you can just paint right over that land. And I'm just adding a texture to it. So it looks more like grassland. You know, we're, we're inland. It's grassland. It looks, it looks nice. Um, then we want to go with, you know, how did this town form? Why do people come here? You know, what, what is the deal? Why, why are they coming here at all? So maybe there's a road that passes not far from here. So in that case, I'm going to select, uh, let's go with, um, maybe it's not a real well-kept road. So it's just dirt. Um, parchment stained is actually really, really nice for making roads. I'm going to make that a really small brush like that and let's say uh, we're at softness a little bit less than less than pure hard edged we want it to be somewhere in the middle and I want opacity at full and I'm just gonna draw right on through that looks a little too rough so let me undo that and I think the softness needs to be a little bit higher so I'll just draw right on through like that and Boom, there's our road. Now that road goes from maybe, you know, this big city over here to this other big city way over here. And there's really nothing in the middle but forest land. So some enterprising guy decided, hey, you know what? I am going to build a farm here. So in Fantasy Regional HD, we have crop, crop four, crop three, crop two, crop one. Um, let's just go with crop one for now. And let's say, he goes a little bit off that road and he builds himself a little plot of land, right? So let's go back over here to the brush tool again. And I don't know that his road would necessarily be quite the same. It might be uh, more like a hmm, wasteland brown. I think that looks nice. We will be making some adjustments to all these things later. So don't get too worried about the exact colors. And I'm just going to make a little offshoot of that road leading to his town. Looks pretty rudimentary at this point, but that's the idea. And I'm gonna go back to the stamp tool here and I'm gonna open my catalog again. And you know, farms, look at that, farms. Let's see, what do we like? Um, oh, I don't know, just going through a couple. Oh, this one looks pretty good. Let me zoom in on that so you can see it just a little bit better. He builds himself, uh, you know, let's say he builds himself a nice little farmhouse there, right? Um, as he does this, he says, hey, you know what? I'm in a perfect spot where people are passing by on this road. 
by the way, if you hold the space bar down, it turns, see the pointer turns to a hand, you can move around the map. So I like to work zoomed in like this, it just seems a little bit nicer. So he says, well, you know, people can pass by here. Maybe I ought to put up a general store. So let's, uh, let's see if we can find a decent looking general store for him. Just nothing too big, just, uh, no, actually, um, uh, let's see. No. No, not quite. Oh, well, maybe, maybe. Let's go with this one. Um, you can change the size, so I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit. That way it's it's not this giant general store, it's just, you know, a, an average general store. Let's just put it a little bit off the main road. Maybe he doesn't have the permits to put it right on the main road. Um, and we'll grab that brush again, and we'll just make some dirt around that building, because, you know, if it gets some traffic, people wouldn't necessarily uh, keep it all green around the edges like that. that. That looks pretty good there. Okay, now we have a general store. And now that the general store is there, we might need somebody to, uh, I don't know, maybe do some smithing work, you know, some blacksmith type work. So let's go back to our human city here and look through these buildings. That could be a smithy. What do you think? Yeah, I, I like that. So this other guy comes in, meets the farmer who built a general store and says, hey, you know what? I'm a decent blacksmith. You, you need any work? And he starts working for him. And after a while, he builds himself his own smithy right there. And in having a smithy, well, guess what the next thing that's going to come, come around is going to be? Let's go with stables. Let's see if I can find a stable house. Uh, anything that looks like a stable. That's an archery range, but you know what? That kind of looks like a stable to me. So we're going to put stables just right over there. And again, we're going to try to connect these with roads, but that'll come in a little bit more time. Um, open that catalog again. That farmer, he's he's he has a, a little bit more demand for his product now. So he's uh, he's putting out some more crops. He's got some more. And I know I made these different sizes. I am OK with that. I just like the way that is working out. And he's he's got some more crops planted. He, uh, you know, some people start to say, hey, this is starting to look like a nice little town. Can I come live here? But before they can live here, they might want to stay a couple of nights. So we get an inn. And let's put the inn just across the street. So that way it's on that side of the road. Keeps all the rabble rousing away from the farmer's house and from the, the main part of the town there. And as that starts to happen, then we start getting houses. People say, oh, you know what? I kind of like it here. Let me let me build a house. And I'm just going to choose a spot right there. And there's my house. And then maybe somebody else chooses a spot right next to the inn. Why? I don't know. But maybe they did. And they put their house right there. We zoom out just a little bit. You get to see that this little town is starting to spring up around this road. And I, I just think that's kind of the way towns would form. And I, I like having a little story behind how the towns get formed. So I'm going to go back here. And you know what? Now that we have that, we need a market because people have all this stuff to sell. You know, the farmer, he has stuff to sell. So let's put uh, let's put a market. Oh, I would think it'd be away from the stables and probably not too far from the road. Boom, there's our market. And in order to, you know, have more stuff going on, maybe um, we need to have a bakery. So let's let's just snag a bakery here. And that would probably be pretty close to the market so that, you know, the wafting smells of baked goods and that sort of thing. And then, hmm, what else do we need? Well, let's take a look. In order to get the grain milled from the farm to the bakery to put at the market, you probably need a windmill. So let's let's not, let's drop a windmill not too far from the farm. Oh, I would say about there seems like a good place for our windmill. And you know, all this hubbub is happening here. I'd say somebody opens another inn, maybe right over by that that house right over there. And then let's start dropping in some more buildings just where people are living you know um, i'm using the human town set just because i really like it and it, it as you can see i'm getting randomized buildings as i drop things onto this map and i'm just dropping a couple things here and there maybe we need a dedicated tavern i i think a tavern is what this place needs um let's find that looks like a really cool tavern. We're going to put the tavern a little bit away from the inn. Um, 
Oh, you know, that's pretty close to the residential district, but that's looking like the low rent district. And up here might be like the more rich people. So let's put it there. And then, you know, over time, every single town will get some sort of a religious place or something like that. So let's grab a temple. Um, that's looking a little bit big and ornate for our tiny little town. Uh, that's even more so. You know, honestly, they call this a mausoleum. I say that kind of looks like a church. So let's put the church, oh, not by the tavern. Let's put the church like right on the edge of town. That way, some people coming in one way would see it first. And we'll put it near the low rent district just because that's where I chose to put it this time. And then from there, we want to start adding in other things like maybe, you know, in order to have access to water, town could really use a well so let's put it near the blacksmith's place because he would need it and now that our town is really getting going let's say hey you know what somebody decides we need some power to be able to run some of these other things and maybe the bakery could use it too so they build a water mill right next to the river using the river as their source of power and let's say over there well you know the guy that works there he's going to need a house so he's going to start building some homes over there and let's just go with um uh, go no that's too ornate for them that's a nice house nothing it's not too too fancy but it's nice and look at it, it's it's waterfront property too and we're just going to grab a couple more buildings because you know people just when one person starts building people start building all around them and before you know it, we have all these residents living in the town. We have a tavern. We have a bakery. We have a couple of inns. We have a marketplace. We have a smithy. We have a stable. We have a windmill. We have the farm. Now, I would say this town is starting to get big enough that maybe we need some more farms. So let's go over here and grab crop two. And, you know, now our farmer is going to have a little bit of competition. He's going to, this, this new guy is going to come into town and he's going to start building his farmland all up here. He's just outside of what some people might consider the main town, but he's still there. Let me grab some farm buildings here. And this guy's got some money. He invested. So he's got, you know, like a barn type building there. He, he built a couple of ramshackle type little houses for uh, his help kind of thing and he has a, a pen maybe over here for animals and then uh, let's see his house he'd probably make a pretty decent house let's there's there's his little forge for uh, he's doing his own blacksmith thing see this guy's just gonna be a problem you can tell he's taking over doing all kinds of crazy stuff in this town he's, he's making it his own uh, let's just see I'm looking for a nicer building for him let me let me go to a different set because you know you don't have to use that set to do these things um, let's see. Human Town 2. Anything nice in this one? Oh, yeah, that's looking like a pretty nice farmhouse, kind of you know, on the fancier side there. There we go. And maybe as he does that, you know what? He decides, I'm going to put in another inn. So he's, he's really pushing it with how far he wants to go in this town. And he puts an inn right on the water just like that and as that goes in well some other people start start building their buildings you know like maybe somebody goes on that side of the road and they build they build an inn over there and then there's a somebody else will build a house right there and then somebody will build a house right there and before you know it everything's starting to fall into place but you're probably looking at this going brian this is like boring i mean there's like nothing here it just doesn't look all that great right well Let's start adding some interesting stuff. This town starts to grab the attention of various peoples. And so they decide to institute a town watch. And they put a guard tower there and maybe a guard tower there just to watch the outskirts of town. And, you know, it wouldn't be a town if it didn't have the crazy wizard. You know, there's always that crazy wizard that moves in and everybody just questions everything about him. And they wonder what's going on all the time. And this guy... He came to town, he stayed at the inn for a while, and you noticed all these shipments of stone and, and all this kind of stuff coming in all the time, and he was building a tower way out here, way out from the town. So he's he's a good, you know, quarter mile, half mile outside of the main town there. But let's start filling in 
the rest of the surrounding areas. This is where it gets really, really interesting. So what I want to do is start adding some foliage. And for that, I'm going to go up here to our trees. I like, um, you know what? Maybe this is a deciduous forest type place. So let's grab some deciduous trees. Now, if you notice, this has the multiple different trees. So these are going to, see, as I move around, it just drops them. I'm just dragging that mouse around and it drops them onto the page. And I'm just going to basically paint all around our buildings. Now, the cool thing about using these stamp tools like this is I can put all this all over the map. And what will happen is I can paint underneath. So I can still paint the ground. I can still put in roads and things like that without affecting my foliage. And I'm just going to fill in a lot of these areas that would have trees you know there's our forest and then maybe the wizard took down some trees around his his tower yeah, and just fill all this in you can make the trees larger or smaller if you want to um, I tend to think this forested area is all roughly the same age so I would think it'd be roughly the same size now a way to change it up a little bit too is to grab like the dead trees here and just drop a couple of those here and there uh, because you know no forest is pristinely perfect and maybe around the wizard's house there's a few more you know maybe he's a bit of a necromancer and dead things are starting to pile up around his house yeah i, I kind of like that and then i'm going to see if there's any bushes here we go bushes and i'm just going to start doing the same idea drag around with those a little bit and they're kind of like a different height so they fill in around they are rather large on purpose so that way they kind of work like a different kind of tree um, you can make them a lot smaller like if I go a lot smaller with them and then I can like really get detailed around the houses if I want to I don't find that kind of detail to be all that necessary but I do you know I like to change it up a little bit have a little bit of difference here and then let's grab some of these like oak trees and they're they're going to be a little bit bigger i mean they they've just been around longer so we got some oak trees just drop a couple of those here and there and again these are you can just drag and move and they place themselves like that just changes it up a little bit um Maybe some cherry blossoms around the, the inn over here. Yeah, look at that. And maybe the farmer has some cherries too. You know, he's growing, he has a whole orchard of cherries, right? And then let's go with, uh, you know, ha you got to have that one like weird person that lives in a tree or something, right? You know, like the elf that just decided to call this place home and they have a place right out there and it just drops that right in you can change where that sits too if you look over here where my cursor is there's the different layers and as you can see if i flip through them i can make it where it looks really weird all the way to it blends right into the forest and there it is you barely even know it's there okay now let's get to work on the ground some more because this is just it's not all that amazing for the ground so i'm going to grab a different texture Let's see, what do we have here? Um, I think for the forest, we're still looking at like a grass mixed kind of kind of thing. And I'm gonna go with a large brush. I'm gonna keep it really soft and I'm gonna go a little bit more uh, subdued with the uh, opacity. So that way it doesn't go 100%. And you can see I can like paint in there. And every time you click that mouse and drag, you're adding a little bit more of that texture. Just to, blend it in a little bit more. I'm actually going to bring the opacity all the way up so I can fill that in. Okay. And now let's, let's build our roads again because you no, know, it just kind of bothers me the way that road looks. So, Oh, let's see dirt. Let's just go with dirt. Change the, the size of it a little bit down, keep it nice and soft. And we're going to just paint over that road that we made before. See how you can just correct things if you don't like the way it came out? Just painting right over that. Now roads definitely are something that it just takes a little practice because you can paint right over them. Like as you can see, I am just painting right over what was already there. 
almost to the point that you can't really see it anymore. But I'm creating a dirt path, essentially. And you'll see what I'm going to do in a minute. You see, I, I don't have to worry about painting through buildings because I can paint right through them, no problem at all. And build a little road out that way. And then maybe there's just a little path going off towards that, that house out in the middle of the woods. And the wizard's tower. Okay, now what I want to do in town is going to be nicer grass. So let's go with a larger brush and start painting it around. And now you see that road pops a little bit better just by taking that grass in there. Change the size and I can do some detail work here. Because you figure around the homes and the buildings, they'd probably keep the grass a little bit nicer, you know, if they're keeping grass at all. And the further you go into the forest, the more leaves have fallen and more dead brush and that sort of thing. So it would uh, be less verdant green and more just like a, you know, kind of dirty looking a little bit. Okay. And now I'd like to do a little bit more with that road. It's just kind of bothering me the way that came out. So let's, um, hmm, let's go with land brown and see what happens. We're just going to redo some of the roads, but I am going to do it with a really low opacity. And that way I can just add a little bit of brown to the existing road, adding some extra texture, some color, just like that. And it does make it stand out just a little bit more. And now I can bring that opacity all the way back up and I'm going to connect these buildings now. Ooh, that's too much. See, and just control Z undo. I'm going to take that down to about mm, maybe 70%. Yeah, that's better. Now I can put in the little trails for those buildings. I am changing the road again. Yep. Just something I got to do. Draw through there. I'll smooth it out a little bit more with another texture when I'm done. Now the road really shows might be a little too brown, but we'll, we'll see what I can do. And I just want to build a road there. And then maybe there's a little path over here. And you know what? There's no way for people to get across. I just realized that. Let's let's find them a bridge. How about a bridge? Where do we got a bridge? A uh, stone bridge, wooden bridge. I don't know. This isn't really a fancy type town, but I think a stone bridge for that might work. I mean, these are wealthy people. So we'll grab that stone bridge. Look at the size of that thing. It's huge. And it doesn't really fit. Well, it sort of fits there. So let's just tone that down. Zoom in pretty far here. Mm, it sort of fits there. Let's uh, make it a little bit bigger. We have our bridge. And now I want to go back and build my road to connect all these things and to connect here. So our road goes up to the bridge and then maybe... Another road comes across this way. And then, you know, all these buildings over here. And I don't know, maybe there'd be a little bit of dirt in front of that house. You know, dirty it up in front of the buildings and around the entrances to buildings. Because as people walk and move around, it's not necessarily going to stay. And that's mostly how these footpaths get formed. I would say the market has zero grass. <laughs> it's just going to be total dirt. And I mean, everybody's parking there their carts and their horses all around it. So it's like that. And let's put a road leading here. And there's going to be a lot of dirt around that guy too. And even around this, just going to be dirt rather than... And there we go. That's And that's how the roads kind of get formed, is just from people walking on the area, you know? Okay, so now we're seeing we got a road passing through. Okay, so something else that we can do to make this look a little bit more interesting is I'm going to add a little bit of elevation in the background to these the forested area. And I do that by using the mountains. Now I'm going to use Green Mountains Large. And as you can see what it does, see that's the type of thing it is. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and I'm just going to start dropping a couple of those down. Do you see it's very subtle? It's not necessarily this huge thing that really shows through but it does add just a touch of elevation to the map. It's not a major thing and they just kind of poke through here and there and it looks like the trees are growing on top of it. Um, you can actually go through and like choose the various things and change the layer so that it'll show through, something like that. Um, if I go through and I grab like some of the other mountains, if you go over here to your objects, I can just grab that and I can 
bring that up a little bit and we see the mountains start to poke through. Just like that. Just kind of the, the whole town built up around this little area in the mountains. You know, like a little depression in the mountains. I just think that looks much, much better. It gives a little homey feel. Um, looks pretty cool. Let's let's drop another mountain up in that corner. Right about there. So maybe that's why this road exists, is it's a pass through the mountains that wasn't there before. And that one just needs to get moved because it looks horrible where, the way it is. Let's put that like that. And then let's fix our road a little bit. Coming through there. You know, it's the only pass through. There's a little, nice little valley here. Um, got a little bit of water. So it became a popular pass through. And in doing that, that's how it kind of became a town. Now, think of the various role play things that you can do with an area like this. Now, I'm not going to go through and mark every single of the uh, areas because it's mostly the same thing. But let's just say I want to mark this as the inn, right? So you just grab the text tool. And we're going to say in, put it right on top of there. You don't need to hit enter though. <laughs> and the easiest way I find to make more of these is to right click duplicate, and then I can drag it over and then just change the name just like that. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, watermill, right? Nope. I keep doing that enter thing. Mark it. Um, this was the, this was the bakery. Obviously you can give these a little bit more creative names, but uh, this is the gist of, of the thing. And we have um, an inn here, and then we have a tavern. And maybe over here we have um, another inn. And then this is your temple. And let me move around the map a little bit. Ooh, look at that. We have all this unused area down here. Now, if you end up doing that where you weren't paying attention and you end up with unused area, what I'm going to do is make a really big mountain zone here that kind of, see, look at that. It, it sort of is like we're coming out of the mountain and I'm going to make that a little bit smaller now and then drop like you're into the foothills like that, and even around the side there. There we go. Now we are really on the edge of a mountain and it really gives the impression of why people might have wanted to settle here because they're like, there's a mountain there and then there's another mountain on the other side and it's the first pass around that mountain. Makes it kind of a neat reason why this whole little village would exist. But I did cover up our treehouse, didn't I? It's gone. Oh, I don't, I don't see it anymore. Okay. No problem. If that is to happen, and it does happen a little too often, I'll admit, you just grab a new one, right? And let's just drop it right there. And I'm going to lower that layer of it so that it's blended in. Oh, see, it just disappears. So instead, I'm going to move it around until it finds a good spot, so to speak. Um, maybe we put it like at the foot of the mountain there, something like that. You can also delete trees around it. You can also add trees on top of it, like what I'm going to do here, I'm going to grab um, some deciduous trees, make them a little smaller, and I'm going to make sure that layer is on top. See, and now I can just sort of hide it in among the trees. And there we go. And now, of course, we need another path leading out there, sort of, and it just kind of goes out. You don't really see it much, but it is there. Okay, now let's let's put some text on this. This is Treehouse. I actually, in one of my campaigns, made a a very evil hag living out in the treehouse who disguised herself, looking like a nymph, and um, it was it was an awesome piece of RP in a town that it just turned into a whole event for people, and uh, it was just very very cool. And then out here we have the Wizard Tower because every town has one, and he might be benevolent, he might be evil. You never know. He could be good, bad, otherwise he could be crazy. He could just be a hermit. There's all sorts of storylines to that. And being that this town is like right next to the mountains and there's a river there, any number of things can come through this town. But at, this is just my basic little um, how to start up a town in 
incarnate. Now, what I would also do is go through and each one of these areas, I would mark up, you know, an NPC that lives there. I would give a couple of little notes about what they do and that sort of thing. And that way I have a living, breathing town for the adventurers to come to and for everybody to play in. I did forget one little thing, and that is when you're doing this, if you see, I just clicked the menu item up here. I can save this map and I'm just going to save it as town for video <laughs> just because and I'm going to let that save and it just takes a second or two and then from there I hit the menu again and I hit export as image and it'll give me suggested sizes you can make them any size you want I tend to work with the 2048 by 2048 at most and then I just hit save and I can save it to wherever I need it to be saved to and they have optional things here where you can share the link share it on reddit I don't really do any of that and then you hit continue editing and you're right back into your map again so this way you have this map saved on incarnate and you also have your jpeg version of it that you can drop into you, your favorite virtual tabletop but uh as always thanks so much for watching and may the rolls ever be in your favor